Hi, my name is Andrew Palmer. And I'm Ann Billick. And for our final project for EC4760, we created a do-it-yourself home wireless home automation system that we called Smart Sitter. So in our system, um, we essentially, as you can hear, that's the motion sensor. You gotta stop moving. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so there's a motion sensor. Yeah, so essentially that's a passive infrared motion sensor. So when you turn on the system, it takes a little bit to learn its environment. And then whenever there's a change in its environment, it's 180 degrees, so it's pretty sensitive. Mm -hmm. Whenever there's a change in infrared um, in its environment, then it outputs a digital high signal, which then goes to the MCU and comes up on here on our wireless terminal and it'll say motion sensor alert. Okay, so the terminal on the on the on the PC is coming through an XB, so the so the uh, the XB on the on the main board over here is communicating with it. So this this unit can be anywhere within a hundred meters. Yeah, so meters this could be so. in your home within a hundred meters and you could be at your computer um, somewhere else in your house with this XB over here mm -hmm. and then communicate with your system. And, the, and there's a temperature sensor on here. Yes, so there's a temperature sensor over here in this corner that's an analog temperature sensor and that's taking in readings and you can set um, the temperature using the Peltier device which is a thermoelectric cooler. So this simulates the heat load of the house. Yes, this, right. so essentially um, in theory you could hook this up to your heating and cooling system in your home um, this was just a proof of concept to show that we could actually do it, and that's driven by an H-bridge. So essentially how the Peltier device works is that um, when you drive a current through it, one side gets warm and the other side gets cool. Mm -hmm. And we use the H-bridge because when you flip the current the other way, then the sides switch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a smoke detector on here also? We do. Can I uh, can you see it work? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so... So you, you're you going to hit it with propane yep. or butane or whatever's butane. in there? Butane. And then you'll see it should pop up on the... Okay. So now then, over here it says <laughs> run, run fire. fire. Okay. Okay. So then so. it also pops up on the LCD, but it's not there anymore. That's okay. Fine. So that's the LCD is pretty dark. I don't think I can get that on video, but... And you're you're causing the motion detector to go off because you're in the in the yeah. field of it. So hit the fire detector again. Okay. Now if if the if the motion detector detector was disabled, would the fire cause a local alarm also? No, the fire's not hooked up to the local alarm. The yeah, fire's hooked up to your okay. So it's hooked up over here, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's a really important one. When you see that, you want to get yeah. You want to leave. Yeah. leave. All right. Um, you can also check so the status, status of your. Tells you what the latest temperature uh, motion detector, smoke detector, what was, mm -hmm. and then it updates. So there's no smoke. Mm -hmm. so that's the okay. last check. So essentially, if you're curious about your home, you can just hit S and it'll tell you what's been happening. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine different additions to this too. There's the motion detector. You could easily put switches on it for a window, for instance, right. for, for the classic. So there's, I mean, there's endless amount of things you can do with home automation. We originally thought about doing like an automatic water pump also, um, but we thought that the Peltier would be a much better use of our, our budget and time. But you can, I mean, you can hook up anything to it mm -hmm. and interact with the system. Another cool thing with this smoke detector, they have different kinds that also detect um, carbon monoxide, which oh. would be really good to know before you walked into your home that that was there, so wirelessly you could communicating with what's going on in your home. That so the cool. so the next next obvious thing is how do you get this to your cell phone? Yeah, so we looked into that also. Luckily these were um, surplus, so they didn't count against our budget, but you can buy XBs that also that can communicate within 40 miles. You can also get um, yeah. Bluetooth sensors. Uh, those also obviously are a little more expensive. You can get Bluetooth so that can interact with your phone just through a normal Android or iOS app. So as you walk up to the door, you, yeah. you, you check, check what's going on inside mm -hmm. before you go into the house. Yeah, exactly. Nice. <laughs> okay. Well, it's clearly all working. <laughs> Because we're, we're getting all these motion alerts there because you're standing in the field of the, <laughs> yeah. of the sensor. Exactly. And uh, how are the XBs to set up? The XBs actually were not too difficult to set up. There's a lot of literature on um, how to set those up. Obviously, if you have a lot of XBs in the area, um, if they have oh. the same address, then you can get some oh. interference. But luckily, there's you know a lot of addresses that you can choose and no one else is using them. So we don't have any interference with those, but 
Um, we basically just went through a couple different tutorials on how to make a do-it-yourself instant messaging service with the XBs. Mm -hmm. um, took that over to our project. Okay.